This is the notes for section 8-9, Areas of Circle. If you haven't done so already, make sure you uh, pause the video at this time, read the section before going on with these, uh, these notes. Uh, the first thing, and, and basically everything in this section is going to be based off of this, and that is the circle area formula, something that you should have uh, had uh, several times actually before this year, but just want to reiterate this point. So if I'm going to find the area of a circle, that area will always be equal to pi times the radius squared. Okay. Now, in the book, in your reading, you, sh you should have found that um, they went through a way of, of coming up with that formula. I'm not going to spend much time with that piece right now, but we're going to spend more time with the idea of applying that formula and then kind of extending it a little bit. So the area formula is pi r squared. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at example one here. It says, this diagram shows a cross section of a can of three tennis balls. If the radius of each ball is two inches, find the area of the cross section that is outside any of the tennis balls. Okay, well to do that, what I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the area of the rectangle. I'll call that AR. And I'm gonna subtract from the area of the rectangle the area of the circles. Okay. So to do that, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the area of the rectangle. So the area of the rectangle is going to be equal to, well, I got I have to find the dimensions here. So all I know is that the radius of the tennis ball is two. Well, if the radius is two, that means that the diameter of that tennis ball is four. And there's three of those tennis balls, so that means that that entire distance would be four times three, or 12, um, 12 inches. Okay. And then if I'm looking at the width of that rectangle, well, if if the radius is two, or we know the diameter is four, so that would be this distance here. So we could say this is four inches. Therefore, the area of the rectangle would be 12 inches times 4 inches, which is equal to 48 square inches. So the total area of the rectangle is 40 square, 48 square inches. Now I need to find the area, area of the three circles. Well, to do that, I'm going to find the area of one circle first, which is pi r squared, which is, in this case, pi times 2 squared, because the radius is 2. And I'm going to leave that as an exact value as 4 pi. Okay. Now, there's three of those circles, so I'm going to take 3 times that, which is equal to 3 times 4 pi, which would be equal to 12 pi. Therefore, the area that I'm looking for is going to be 48 square inches minus 12 pi pi square inches. And that's when I can go to my calculator to get an approximate answer for that area, which, if I multiply that out, would be approximately 10.3 if I round it to the nearest tenth. So that'd be approximately 10.3 square inches. So we've got 10.3 square inches, and that would represent the area that we're looking for. Okay, next we want to look at how area relates to probability. And we know when we look at probability, thinking back to your algebra course and your and primary your algebra course, probability says that the when we're looking at probability, we're looking at the 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 the, a ratio comparing the number of things that we want to have happen compared to the total possible things that could happen. Well, we can we can think of it the same way when we look at um, area. If we're finding probability involving area, what we can do is we can set up a ratio of the area of the selected region, that number would go on top, compared to the area of the in the entire region, which would go on bottom. And that would give give us a number, always a number, somewhere between 0 and 1. So 
So let's see if we can apply this probability idea to, to example number two here. It says a dart hits a spot on, on this target at random. What is the probability that the dart lands inside the circle but not inside the square? Okay, so, so if I'm thinking about the area that I want it to land in, well, that area would be all of this stuff right here, all of these little areas here which I can find by taking the area of the circle minus the square. So on top, I'm going to want the area of the circle minus the area of the square. And on bottom, I'm going to want the, the in area of the entire target, which would be it lands somewhere in the circle. So that would be the area of the circle. So the first thing I need to do is I need to find the area of the circle and the area of the square. Well, the circle is relatively easy to find. I know the radius is 5 inches. So if, if the area of, of the circle is pi r squared, that would be pi times, in this case, 5 squared, which is equal to 25 pi. And I'm going to leave that as an exact answer. It's just easier to work with. Okay. Now, the area of the square is a little bit trickier. In order to find the area of the square, there's a couple different ways that I can go about doing it. Okay? The traditional way of thinking about that would be, hey, I have to find the length of the, of the side here. Well, to do that, I can think about this as being a right triangle. In fact, a special right triangle where these two sides are equal to each other. And this hypotenuse would have to represent um, the um, the hypotenuse of uh, 45, 45, 90. So if each of these is 5, I know this has got to be 5 times the square root of 2 because it's x square root of 2 from our special right triangles. Okay. Well, if it's a square, it's got to be that on each side. So to find the area of the square, I can take 5 times the square root of 2 squared. Well, let's think about what that is. I've got to square both of these. That's 5 squared square root of 2 squared, which is equal to 25 times 2, because the square root of 2 squared, the squaring just undoes the square root. Therefore, the area would be 50, in this case, um, square inches. Okay, So the circle is 25 pi square inches. And the area of the square is 50 square inches. Now, there is another way that we can think about that one in terms of finding the area of that square that I just want to mention briefly. And that is, if this is 5, I can think about the diameter here, or I'm sorry, the diagonal here as being having a length of 10, and this diagonal also having a length of 10. And I also know, since it's a square, that they intersect, they're perpendicular to each other. Therefore, I can think of that as being the area is equal to 1 half diameter 1 times diameter 2. Well, the area is equal then to 1 half times 10 times 10, Oops. which is equal to 50 square inches as well. So either way that you think about that, uh, you're going to get 50 square inches for the area of that square. All right, so now let's see if we can we can uh, work with our ratio that we started setting up here, c minus s over c. So I've got to take the area of the square minus the area circle. That That's the number that's going to go on top. Okay, which is about 28.54. Now I'm going to work with this this as long as we can. I'm going to write the approximate down, but I'm going to keep this on my calculator so that I can get, so I only round once, but I'll, I'll write the approximate down just so that we can kind of see where I'm going with this. So I've got 28.54 here, and then on bottom I have 25 pi. So now to get that, let's get an approximate decimal for that. So if I come back over here to my calculator, and if I divide by uh, 20, okay. Now if I hit enter on that, I get about 0.36, which makes more sense. So this would be approximately 0.36 or 36%. 
All right, the last thing I'd like to look at, or the last idea that I'd like to look at, is the area of a sector. So circles can be divided into sectors. Basically, when we talk about the area of a sector, we're talking about if we have a circle, if we have a kind of a piece of the pie, if I want to find the area of something like this, that would represent a sector of that circle. Well, to find the area of a sector, we're just going to take the measure of that central angle of that sector divided by 360 times the area of the circle. That will allow me to find the area of the sector, because really it's just what fraction of the circle is it. OK, the last example I'd like to look at is number 3 here. It says a, a sector of a circle has a central angle of 18 degrees. If the radius of the circle is 30 centimeters, find an exact value for the area of the sector. Okay, So what I'm really going to do is just use this area of sector formula. I'm going to put 18 in for the measure of the angle for that sector over 360 times pi r squared times pi times 30 squared. Okay, And why don't you go ahead and put that in your calculator and see what you get. Why don't you just pause the video at this time, see what you get on your calculator, and then when you turn it on, I'm going to have the answer up here. Okay, so the the answer to that would be 18 over 360 times pi times 30 squared, which is we wanted an exact value, so that would be 45 pi. So the answer for that particular problem would be 45 pi. And then in terms of units, we have centimeters, so it's going to be 45 pi centimeters squared because we're talking about area.